Hello everyone. This is case number 20. In this video, we are going to review nasopalatine duct cyst. We'll start with a panoramic radiograph and then we'll go to a peripical radiograph. This is how the doctor had ordered the imaging. Finally, we'll have a CBCT of the same patient to review. Let's start with the history of the patient. This is a 21-year-old male. About four years ago, he had trauma to his right lateral incisor and right central incisor. The central incisor crown was chipped. This chipped tooth was restored. At this time, there are some symptoms in the central incisor area. A vitality test was done. This central incisor tests vital but somewhat slower than the lateral incisor. So the doctor had ordered this panoramic radiograph. On the panoramic radiograph, we can see an increased density in the crown of the central incisor. We know that this tooth was restored. We can see the pulp canal of the right lateral incisor and the left central incisor. The pulp canal of the right central incisor is not clearly visible, suggesting possible sclerosis. But this tooth had tested vital. We see a corticated circular radiolucency near the apex of this tooth. You can see that this radiolucency is not at the midline and it is not with the lateral incisor or the left central incisor. So with the history of trauma, sclerosis of the pulp canal and radiolucency near the apex of the right central incisor, the first choice in the differential diagnosis would be a radicular cyst. Because the central incisor had responded to vitality test, it makes sense to obtain a periapical radiograph. The details of a tooth is much better on a periapical radiograph compared to a panoramic radiograph. So on this periapical radiograph, what do we see? We see sclerosis of the pulp canal of the central incisor. This is what we had seen on the panoramic radiograph. We can also see a well-defined radiolucency in the apical region of the central incisor. Also, we can confirm that this radiolucency is not at the midline. We see the apex of the right central incisor is blunt and may be a little shorter than the left central incisor. However, the most important finding here is the PDL space of the right central incisor is intact, uniformly wide, and may not be in contact with the radiolucency. We have a CBCT scan. We'll use the scan to see if the lesion is associated with the central incisor. With some cases, I had used on-demand 3D software. I'm using InVivo software for this image. This scan was for maxillary arch only. So we have three views, an axial view, a cross section of a tooth, and a reconstructed panoramic radiograph. This vertical line or this line indicates the image that we have on this window. So this line is going through the right canine and we are seeing the right canine here. As we scroll through the canine and now we are in the lateral incisor. As we move mesially to the area of the central incisor, this is the apex of the central incisor and there may be a little bit of widening of the pedial space. The interesting finding is that here is a cystic lesion not associated with the central. As we remember from the peripical radiograph, the root of the central incisor is blunt and probably short. So moving mesially, this is the lesion. It's not in contact with the root of the central incisor and this lesion is continuous with the nasopalatin canal. From the superior aspect, we can see the nasopalatin canal and let me move this away. This is the nasopalatin canal. That's the normal size of the canal and as we come towards the root and you can see that the canal is becoming wider. So that's the cystic lesion. And you can appreciate that the cyst is more towards the right side of the jaw than the left. The nasopalatin duct cyst is also known as incisive canal cyst or median palatine cyst. This cyst arises when epithelial remnants of the nasopalatin duct undergo cystic transformation. Most of the nasopalatin duct cysts are identified in patients between the age of 40 and 60 years. 
these cysts are most common in males. The incidence is three times higher in males. These cysts account for about 10% of all jaw cysts. These are some of the helpful radiographic features. Most of the time, the nasopelatin duct cyst is at the midline of the maxilla between the central incisors. It may extend into the heart palate, while most of these cysts are symmetric at the midline, some can be asymmetric either to the right or the left side of the midline. And in our case, the cyst was asymmetric. This cyst can cause expansion of the maxilla. The patient may have discomfort or pain. And many times radiographically, we can see that the roots of the central incisors are separated. Just like any other cyst, the border is well defined, the shape is circular or oval. However, if you take a periapical or an occlusal radiograph, the anterior nasal spine may superimpose over the cyst, giving it a shape of a heart. Let's review two such cases. These two radiographs show large nasopalatin duct cyst. The cyst is here. This is the outline of the cyst. Obviously, the outline of the cyst is circular or oval. The superimposition of the anterior nasal spine, this is the anterior nasal spine, gives this cyst a shape of a heart. I do not recommend you to send a periapical radiograph as a greetings card to your loved ones. Or maybe you should. Kidding aside, because these cysts are large, Please note how the roots are separating more on this radiograph. As you can see on a CBCT scan, on a sagittal view, these are the different variations of the normal nasopalatine canal. One is the cylindrical shape. Superior to inferior, the canal width is uniform. The next is an hourglass shape. The canal is wider at the superior and inferior aspect. The third is a funnel-shaped canal, where the canal is wider at the inferior and narrow at the top. The final one is a spindle-shaped canal. This canal is wider at the central part. This is a difficult appearance. This may mean an early stage of a cyst formation or can even be a variation of normal. That's about it for now. Thank you very much for reviewing the nasopalatine duct cyst with me. Please come back again for another intraoral radiographic interpretation video.